Sean James here from Myself Reliance and welcome back to the cabin. See the wood that I'm holding right here is actually a floorboard for the cabin. I'm going to show you how I did this particular one using a propane torch and also the ancient Japanese technique of just using an open fire to, to put this char on the wood. I'm going to be moving fast today because I have one day of sunshine and then some bad weather coming in. You're going to see something here behind me which We've come as a surprise to, I think, just about everybody who commented on what they thought the roof type should be. Because even though I really appreciated all those comments and gave me a lot to consider and I was convinced one way or the other, depending on the comments that I read, my wife came up with this idea and I liked it and we decided together to go some complete different direction and something that she's always wanted me to do on other projects that I haven't got around to doing. But it's an ancient Japanese technique for preserving wood. In fact, there's a temple in Japan that's over a thousand years old that's still standing and still in good shape and the walls were built using this technique. Uh, the, it's typically done with cypress or cedar and basically what it is is charring of the wood but it's like a hardening, fire hardening of wood. By charring the outside of the wood like this, the wood becomes pest resistant, UV resistant, water resistant, rot resistant and fire resistant. It's a bit of an experiment, we'll see how it turns out. I think it's going to last long enough. I think it's going to last a lot longer than if I didn't burn it and a lot longer than cedar shakes or cedar shingles that aren't treated. Looking forward to seeing how it weathers this first winter and then try to estimate what how long it's going to last now. Typically it's predicted to last about 80 years without treatment, without maintenance. Of course I'm using propane for some of this. I'm doing as little of that as possible. I want to see how much I can get done using the fire burn technique. But if I can't get a full char, I might have to finish it off with propane. I did a double burn on this one and a double scrape with a wire brush and then I treat it with oil. I'll treat this with two or three more coats of oil as well so that there's no charcoal or no black stuff coming off on our feet or our, our footwear in the cabin. But so far, I love the look of it. Hope it does everything it's expected to do. And I look forward to trying it out on some other projects as well. Just a test piece just tacking it up here to see what it looks like. I think this is how I'm doing the ridge cap. I want to see it from the ground and have to see what I need to fill in at the top of these battens. Today's a thinking day. I need to measure twice and cut once hopefully. I'm going to cut into this roof and get the wood stove installed today. 
I need to do that before I do the roofing. Remember this decking is the actual structural roof. So whatever I do here I need to reinforce laterally. Uh, but my issue here is, of course is clearances so I want to install a safe fireplace so what I'm going to do is put a stainless steel chimney down to this point and come to down below the ceiling here so that I don't have to maintain the clearances that I do if I had a single wall pipe which in that case I need 18 inches of clearance with the double wall insulated pipe I only need two inches of clearance now I wouldn't call myself an expert at chimney installations or fireplace installations but one of the first jobs I had when I got out of high school was installing well, wood stoves, uh, liners, and chimney sweeping. So I have a little bit of experience, but that, of course that was a long time ago. Uh, but anyway, I remember the principles and I have instructions. So let's get to work, see what I can do. So when I want to measure something really accurately, Got to remember that these tape measures have this hook that moves on it. That's designed that way intentionally so that when you're jamming this up against something to get a measurement like that, it's accounting for the width of this hook, the metal on there. And then when you hook it onto something like that and pull the measure, it's doing the same thing. It's moving just enough to account for the thickness. But it's not 100% accurate. So what I do when I need extreme accuracy, like I do when I'm cutting a notch like this, uh, I don't want, I want a tight fit on this beam. So I'll take one of these fine lines, I get the three for example, and I'll set that number three, so three inches, on this line, and then I know I need to go 14 inches over, so three plus 14 is 17, so then I'll mark the 17. So that's extremely accurate, down to, you know, a 64th of an inch or something, the width of that line. Mm -hmm. 